So back in 2019, it seemed like Donald Trump was going to cruise to re-election. Um, even if Bernie were the nominee, I don't think it would have been a foregone conclusion that Bernie Sanders would have defeated Donald Trump. I do think Bernie would have been the strongest candidate against Donald Trump. But the media would have gone along with this narrative that, you know, the economy is doing great, even if the working class is being left out. And ultimately, I think that he would brag and a Democrat wouldn't be able to respond to that. And they'd get caught in that same trap that Hillary Clinton was stuck in in 2016, where they had to respond to every single criticism and he would just win. However, having said that, COVID-19 and the subsequent economic crash has changed the trajectory of this election. It put Donald Trump's re-election campaign in danger. He now could lose because of the changes that we all saw took place this year. So, I mean, I don't think it's unreasonable for someone to logically deduce that it's probably going to be Biden who pulls off this victory because whenever there's an economic crash or disaster, it's usually the incumbent president who gets blamed. And 538 has already projected that Biden is currently the favorite to win as he defeated Donald Trump 73 out of 100 times in their simulation. Now, if you are curious how Hillary Clinton fared, well, according to 538's projection in 2016, they also projected her to be the winner, saying she had about a 71% chance of beating Donald Trump. And uh, we all know how that turned out. Now, currently, at this point in time, Joe Biden is outperforming Hillary Clinton in one really important area, national polling averages. He's currently two points ahead of her nationally at this same point in time in the 2016 election. So she had a 5.4% lead over Donald Trump in August 24th, 2016, but Biden has a 7.6% lead over Donald Trump, which is important because you want to make sure that you have a really large cushion so that way if there's any sort of October surprise or whatever, if you will, you know, you can absorb that blow and still be relatively comfortable going up against him on election day. Now, that is just the national lead. And that gives us an indication that Joe Biden is probably the favorite to win the popular vote. But what we really care about is the electoral vote, because we want to make sure that Joe Biden reaches that magical number of 270, because that is the only way you're going to be able to unseat Donald Trump. So you can win the popular vote as Hillary did and still lose the election ultimately. So in crucial swing states that Hillary Clinton lost, well, how is Biden doing in comparison with Hillary Clinton at the same point in time in 2016? Unfortunately, he's doing way worse than Hillary Clinton in some instances in most states. So in Wisconsin, Hillary Clinton had an 11.5% lead as of August 24th, 2016. But Joe Biden has a 6.5% lead. Now, let me remind you that Hillary Clinton ended up losing Wisconsin by a single percentage point. In Pennsylvania, Hillary Clinton had a 9.2% lead, while Joe Biden now has a 5.7% lead. Hillary Clinton went on to lose that state by 1.2%. In North Carolina, Hillary Clinton led Donald Trump by 1.7%, while Biden now leads him by 0.6%. Hillary Clinton went on to lose that state as well by 3.8 percentage points. In Florida, Hillary Clinton had a 3.6% lead, but in this state, Biden is actually doing better than Hillary Clinton with a 5% lead, but let me remind you that Hillary Clinton ended up losing Florida by 1.3%, so hopefully Joe can actually pull out a win here since he does have a larger cushion. Um, in the state of Michigan, Hillary had an 8-point lead. Biden now has a 6.7-point lead. Hillary ended up losing the state by 0.3%. In Ohio, Clinton nearly had a 5-point lead. Biden only has a 2.3% lead. Trump won this state by almost 9 points. Now, in case you forgot, this is what the electoral map looked like in 2016. Trump got 306 electoral votes to Hillary's 232. I mean, if Biden's going to win, he has to win back the states that Hillary Clinton narrowly lost. Otherwise, this map is going to look the same in 2020. Now, since Hillary Clinton only lost these states narrowly, I think that there is an area for opportunity here for Joe Biden. And, you know, I don't want to get you too stressed out because a lot can change between now and November 3rd. But seeing these numbers, like, it gives me a sick feeling to my stomach because it looks like we are um, going to see a repeat of 2016 if nothing changes. And when I see the strategy coming out of the DNC and from Joe Biden, like they're doing what Hillary Clinton did. They're trying to win over moderate Republican voters when that is a very fringe element of the electorate. They're not swing voters. You should be trying to win over independents, 
namely left-leaning independents. Excite your own base, get out the vote. That's how Obama won, right? He had the Obama coalition, and that contained lots and lots of young voters, non-voters, first-time voters. I mean, that is what you have to do to win. But Joe Biden thinks that he's going to have the Obama coalition turn out for him again, when currently, I mean, he's doing worse than Hillary Clinton. So I don't know what to say about this. I think that, you know, it's reasonable to expect Donald Trump to lose after everything that we've seen. But this is 2020. 2020 has prepared all of us to accept that we are in the worst timeline. And the stupidest possible conclusion will most likely be the one that comes to fruition. So if it's a possibility that Trump can still win, he might win. Um, and at this point, I don't know who's the favorite. Like, I think that it's impossible to predict who's going to win because this election is so volatile. I think that we're going to see a dip in the polls for Joe Biden after the RNC convention. But I mean, we have no idea. Like, the debates could be a game changer. They might not change anything. And maybe just, you know, Joe Biden gradually declines. Maybe Joe Biden shoots back up again. You know, expands his lead over Donald Trump. Who knows? But all I know is that you have to do something more when you see these troubling signs, when you see these red flags, when you see the iceberg ahead. Now is the time to steer the ship in a different direction. Now is the time to make sure that uh, you change it up so you win. And maybe this just means that Joe Biden has to hide away, you know, uh, stay in his basement more. Maybe he's talking too much, doing too many gaffes, and that's a problem. Maybe it means he should try to excite the base with a policy. I mean, there's a lot of things he can do better that he's not doing currently. But what I do know is that if Democrats don't take this seriously, they're stupid because this is serious. If Joe Biden is underperforming Hillary Clinton in 2016, who lost, that's a really bad sign. So we have time to change it now. So let's change it. Let's take these signs seriously, not bury our heads in the sand and pretend like everything is copacetic and, you know, Joe Biden's going to win. Don't get too arrogant because we saw what arrogance and hubris did last time in 2016. It led to Hillary getting defeated. Don't let that happen again, especially when we know what we need to do to make this election go in Joe Biden's favor. I think we all know you've got to introduce some sort of policy. But if you don't change it up, then, uh, you know, using the same strategy again, it could work for you because this election is so different because of COVID-19 and the economic situation that we're currently in but it might not. And I don't want to risk it. I don't know about you, but I think we should do more, right? So if Democrats see this, they need to take this more seriously because this is a really bad sign. Again, it may not spell complete disaster. Maybe it's it's not over and Joe Biden will win comfortably. We don't know that. But because we're operating with uncertainty, we should take it very seriously. Understand that this election could still go in Trump's favor.